If someone tells you that you can do a compression test and with the same test extract tensor properties, do you think that is possible? That's precisely what we're going to be dealing with in this video and I'll be walking you through the design of a specialist specimen that can actually make this possible. Let's sit back and relax as we get started with this video. So let's backtrack a bit. You need to do this using a high rate testing specimen equipment called the split Hawkinson pressure bar. And I'll just show you what that looks like. So if you look at this, it's a classic design of a split Hawkinson pressure bar. So essentially what it has is that it's got an incident bar and a transmission bar. And right in between them, you wedge a sample. And the way this bar is designed is that using this gas gun, you fire a striker, which hits the incident bar compresses the sample and then on the transmission bar you read the stress wave that generates the behavior of the sample. So implicitly it subjects specimen in compression and out of that you generate a compressive behavior. But what we want to do is that we want to use exactly this design but then modify the specimen that we bring into it so that even though the sample is under compression we are going to extract a tensile behavior from that. And how do we do that? So that leads us to this particular work by Moore and Gary in 2007, where they designed a, a really innovative specimen design called the M shaped textile specimen. And if you look very closely, so right within here, you've got the incident bar and the transmitter bar. And right in between it, you've got the M shaped specimen with a little bit of spacers around here and there that you need to bring into the sample during the compressive process. And so, this is what we're going to do to design to show you the geometric design of this m shaped specimen. So if you look more closely, so that's what the structure of this m shaped specimen will look like. And essentially we've got the base here, which is going to be supported. And then there's going to be a compressive pool right at the top here from the incident bar. And the output bar will be on this other end. And during the compressive pool here, this part of the specimen, which looks like a tensile, dog bone tensile specimen, will be subjected to a tensile behavior. And in that region, we're going to then extract our tensile response even though the loading scheme here is a compressive response. So if you look more closely, these are the dimensions of this particular m shaped specimen that we're going to be using and we're going to walk our way through this design. So I want to do it this way by basically creating, noting these corners which are the main turning point in the specimen and I create half of it and then going to revolve that to, I'm going to duplicate that to create the full design of the specimen. So that's the principle. So let's get into Abacus as we show how you can do this within that software. So here we are in Abacus, all we need to do is to create the part which we're going to call M-shaped specimen. And I'm just going to use a connected line and create the connection starting from 00. zero. So we work with this particular numbering system of 00, zero first, then 40 second, and then we go all the way around until we get all the sample fully designed. So that gives us all the designs of the sample exactly as we want. So what we're going to then do is to just remove this region here, which is basically we'll take that bit out and introduce a construction line because this is the line that we're going to use to rotate to create the other duplicate. What we also want is that we want to make sure that we can create, introduce all the contour plots there. So we're going to use a fillet. So if I click on the fillet and number one, one radius, so all the regions where we expect fillet to be, we just click on those two to get the fillet formed as expected. So the fillets are formed as expected. Then we're going to then basically press and hold here, select this mirror button. So we want to create a copy. We want this to be our construction line. And then we want our entities to be selected at this. And so we now have a complete design of everything as it's supposed to be. Now, what we want to do is I want to press and hold here and translate the system. So I want to move it, all of that, starting from here, which is currently 13, 0, and then the end point will be 0 and 3. Okay, and so we have it perfect. And we want to take thickness of 2. So that gives us our m shaped specimen, and quickly, I'm of immediately we are able to design the M-shaped specimen and like we said it is going to be under compression here with these two point anchored this bit will see a tensile deformation there will be a different video at the end that will point you to how you actually model this at the moment we're just looking at creating the design so of course this system is going to sit within in between two compression um, bars an input bar and a compression and a transmitter bar so what we're going to do is to create the bars as well so i'll just call this one an incident bar 
So it's going to be made by extrusion as well. So the dimension of the bar probably will be just around, you know, 15, so 30, 30 cm so diameter wise. And the length of the bar, it, is, it can be quite long, but for the purpose of this modeling, let's just probably work with only 100, you know, um, 100 millimeter long. The specimen is just about 20 millimeters, so somewhere uh, in the middle here. So that's the incident bar. So I'm just going to create a copy of that. So if I create a copy, and this copy will now be my transmitter bar, so which is the other bar. So we'll just leave it, leave them here. Now we're going to the assembly module to bring everything all together. So if we then create, okay, the instances will include all those parts as they're supposed to be. So right here we could see now we have the specimen exactly where it's supposed to be here. So what we are going to then do with this specimen is to rotate it so that it lines up with the expected direction. We're going to use this rotate option, rotate instance, and the instance we want to rotate is the M-shaped specimen. And I'm going to rotate it. So if you think about it rotating, it's going to probably rotate about the Z-axis. So we select the instance and we want to rotate about the x-axis and we want to rotate in sort of an anti-clockwise and clockwise direction that will be minus 90 rotation and so we have the sample right in the middle looking as it's supposed to be. So all we need to do is to create the other component with, before um, to bring the other specimen on the other side. But what I want to do, I want to line it up a bit. So I'm going to introduce a, a point. So we we'll use this option which says create a datum point between two and I want it to be between here and there. So the center of this diagonal line, which is here. And then all I'm going to also do is, I'm going to look at, so if you think about the way the sample is designed, so this is the Z axis. So our incident bar would have to be in this direction. So we're going to have to work with the incident bar. So if I go to the assembly module and look for the transmitter bar, I'm going to suppress it. So leaving what is here to be the incident bar. And then like we did before, we're going to create a center point between here and there. So that's a reference point. So we've got this reference point. I'm going to then translate this reference point with this material so that it coincides with the other point there. So what are we going to do? So again, we're going to use this option, which says translate instance. And the instance I want to translate is the incident bar. And I want to translate it from this point. And we want to get to the point where it lines up with this other point. So we get here. Okay, so now we're happy with that. So it looks all right. So it's properly translated and then I can just resume the other bar so that now we have a perfect arrangement of the incident and transmitted bar and the sample right in the middle so that when an, a striker bar impacts on this in, incident bar, the sample compresses in compression and then there's a transmitter section that records the stress wave. And that way, we are able to apply a compression test on a specimen and generate a tensile deformation within the specimen here. So that's our design for the part instances. So that's the design showing the different components that are involved. Then all that we need to do is to actually do the modeling to show how you can do this. So if you're interested in looking at the modeling of how you can do this so that you apply compressive behavior and then you get a tensile deformation and extract the stress strain data, then look at this video. If you just want to learn broadly about um, Stick Hopkinson pressure by the theory and how you can use it in generating high rate tensile response, then look at this video. Thank you for interest in this video and I'll see you in the next. Bye bye. <music>